Hi everybody, uh, here is the final section for Unit 3. I know in previous videos I referred to it as 3-4, I forgot. 3-4 and 3-5 we're going to skip for now. Um, uh, everyone's skipping them, F5 skipped them also. Um, so don't don't worry, you're missing something. It's material that I don't think we need at this point and, and it, it just distracts us from the important stuff. So we may come back to that kind of stuff later, but, but for now we're going to move forward to 3-6. So, um, as sometimes I like to do, I like to start start the lesson off with some sort of a little game um, or, or puzzle or something. So, here's today's little puzzle. You've got two figures here. Each figure is uh, an array, uh, a three by three array of numbers. And your goal is to make figure one look just like figure two. So we want to slowly make some changes to figure one so that figure one ends up looking exactly like figure two with those ones on the diagonal and zeros everywhere else. So here's the rules. Number one, you can multiply or divide every number in a row by the same non-zero number. Uh, just like doing, uh, you know, you got to treat the two sides of the equal sign the same, you got to treat the rows the same. If you're going to multiply one number, you have to multiply or divide all the numbers. Rule two is you can add a row to another row, replacing that, that other row with the sum of those rows. So, I would like you to pause the video now and play with this. Uh, there's, there's multiple ways to approach this. There's, there's, you know, as long as you get from figure one to figure two, your answer is correct as long as you follow the rules. You don't have to do it the same way I do it. So pause the video right now, please, and, and on some scratch paper, see if you can figure this out. So welcome back. I'm going to assume that you have figured this out or you've struggled and given up. And that's okay. This, this is the point of this is to, to give something new a try. And, and if you struggled with it, that's okay. So here's one approach to this problem. Uh, I would, um, let's see, I would, first step, I would multiply row 2 by uh, negative 2. And the result is 1, 8, 2, 0, negative 8, 0, 0, 8, 2. Then, let me scroll down a little bit. Then I would, well, now we can see we got something kind of cool going on here, don't we? We have some 8s and negative 8s in that center column. And so you can, if we should add some things together, some things might fall away, and that would be good, right? So how about if step 2 is we add row 2 to row 3, replacing, whoops, row 3, replacing row 3. Let's make the page a little longer here. There we go. But we lost our row 1. Okay, so if we do that, well, row 1 is going to stay the same. We've still got 1, 8, 2. And row 2 is going to stay the same. We've still got 0, negative 8. You know what? I'm going to spread them out a little more. It starts to look like an uh, arithmetic problem instead of what it is. So we got 1, 8, 2. We've got 0, negative 8, 0. And then if we add these 2 and 3 together and replace 3, we end up with 0, 0, 2. Okay, well look, row 3 is almost where we want it. Next thing I would do is, uh, that first row said we can multiply or divide all the numbers in a row. I think we should divide row 3 by 2. And that's going to give us 1, 8, 2, 0, negative 8, 0, and 0, 0, 1. And very cool, our row 3, if you remember our target here was row 3 is supposed to um, be 0, 0, 1, and indeed that's what our row 3 looks like. So so that's good, we're, we're getting somewhere. The next thing, um, we could divide row 2 by a negative 8 and get row 2 to our goal. But while it's a negative 8, let's go ahead and use it for the row above. And let's 
add row 2 to row 1, replacing row 1. And that's going to give us, well, our 0, negative 8, 0, and our 0, 0, 1 stay the same. Our top row, well, the 8 plus the negative 8 gives us a 0 in the second column, so we're going to have 1, 0, 2. So we're making progress. Sorry, we need more room. Now I would go ahead and let's get row done. Uh, number 5, I would divide row 2 by negative 8. And that's going to give us, well, row 1 is going to stay the same, 1, 0, 2. We're going to have 0, 1, 0, and 0, 0, 1. We are almost there. The next thing I would do, and I'm sh I suspect you can see it coming, I would multiply row 3 by a negative 2, giving us 1, 0, 2, 0, 1, 0, and 0, 0, negative 2. And then I would add row 3 to row 1 replacing row 1. I'm sure in your head you're starting to think, ooh, if we could combine some of these actions, how much better would that be? But right now we're following the rules. So row 2 is going to stay the same. Row 3 is going to stay the same. And row 1 is going to be, <coughs> sorry, row 1 plus row 3, which is going to give us 1, 0, 0. We are almost there. We got to get row 2 back where it was, or row 3 back where it was. So we're going to divide row 3 by negative 2. And here we go. We got 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, and 0, 0, 1. And we did it. That looks exactly like our figure 2 did. So uh, you may have done things a little different, and if you did, or done the same things but in a different order, and that's okay. Um, as long as you got to the same place, you, you were practicing the kind of skills that we're going to be using for this section. So now let's back up and define exactly what a matrix is. Some of you may have already worked with matrix matrices, but just, just in case you haven't or you've forgotten, I want to define it. A matrix is a rectangular array of numbers. And they can be used for many, many very cool, very cool applications of math. Um, and I, I hope someday you all get to take some linear algebra courses and, uh, and, and learn about matrices. Um, and we'll in fact do more stuff later in the year, but for now we're just going to touch on how to use matrices to solve systems of equations. So let me give you an example of a matrix. Um, let's look at 2, 4, 1, 6, 5, 3. Matrices usually have these blocks around them, and we frequently give them names, always capital letters. In this particular case, we have two rows and three columns. We call this a 2 by 3 matrix. The number of rows always comes first. Always, always. Number of rows first. Get used to it. Memorize it. Uh, honestly, it was challenging for me at, in the beginning of my linear algebra career, but but always rows come first. Sometimes you will see um, mathematicians refer to the matrix uh, like this, just, just to be very clear that A is the two row, three column matrix. Each number in the matrix, sorry, I'm getting sloppy here. We're starting to run out of time and I want to make sure I wrap up my thought. Each number in, oh, 
in the matrix is called an element. Frequently we refer to the elements in matrix capital A as little a. Uh, so element A, 1, 2 is the element in matrix capital A. Let me scroll us down a little bit. That is um, in row 1, column 2. So again, rows come first, columns come second. In the example that we've got going here, A1, 2 is equal to row 1, column 2, it's equal to the number 4. So let's go just a little further. Uh, whoops. Not sure what I did there. Let's. Um, pull this back out. Okay, well, um, you know what, let's pause the tape here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end uh, part one so I can clean up the screen and then we're going to do uh, some more work, with, more work with matrices. So go ahead and, and go find the link to uh, video 3-6 part two and we'll pick it up there.